may share words from Lynn Turner, uh, who regrets she cannot be here. So Lynn wrote, I'm very sorry not to be with you in person to share our experiences with Bob Shutter and our shared sense of loss at his passing. Truly, I cannot believe I'm speaking about my memories of Bob because I can't believe he is gone. He was such a large presence in my life and in the discipline. I can hear his voice in my head and it's hard to get my mind around the fact that I won't hear it in life anymore. It's such a personal loss for me, but, I, but one I know I share with many here at NCA and around the world. I know Bob's loss is felt by so many because he was such a generous colleague, scholar, and friend. I'd like to speak briefly about three ways that Bob's generous spirit and engaging personality enriched my life and my scholarship. So first, Lynn wrote connection. Bob was always introducing me to others who might, find, uh, who might help my career or enrich my personal life. When we first met, he found out I was born Jewish and married to a non-Jewish spouse, like he was, and he immediately invited us into a social group he belonged to where all the couples were in that same situation. We enjoyed gathering for many years, and some of those people are still friends today. Further, Bob invited me to speak at several conferences where he was a speaker. We had a wonderful trip to China because Bob connected me to the planner of the conference there, and I was able to present my research and get excellent feedback. The woman who planned the conference later invited me to publish in that journal she edited. Second, Lynn wrote about collaboration. She said, Bob saw something in my research abilities that he encouraged, and we wrote several articles and conference papers together. Watching Bob work at work as we sifted through data taught me a lot about how to organize my approach to analyzing a data set. When we did a study on how black and white women thought about conflict in the workplace, Bob's insight pointed me toward a much more sophisticated analysis than I would have achieved on my own. The paper was about the intersection of perception and communication, and it had a lot of nuance. Bob helped me see that much more clearly than, I, than if I had been left to my own devices. When I received my first promotion and tenure, a member of the PT committee told me that she knew my case was a slam dunk because I had published with Bob. She figured that if I was worth, if he thought I was worth working with, then I was worthy of promotion and tenure at Marquette. And finally, Lynn wrote about charisma. Bob just brought the fun and the party with him wherever he was. He, was, he had such a great sense of humor, and we spent a lot of time laughing together. It didn't matter what we were doing. Bob could find a way to make it fun. I can tell you that faculty meetings are not nearly the same without Bob. <laughs> <laughs> he could take the most mundane topic and make it so interesting and engrossing. I'm sure that's one of the reasons he was such a beloved teacher. Something about him sparkled, and he made me feel funnier and clever, more clever when I was with him. He was always active and always had an idea for something we should do or think about, whether it was a creative way to collect data. Um, for example, she wrote, we once went to a bar <laughs> where a, La a Latinx business association was having a social gathering, in parentheses, or just a fun way to celebrate the holiday, uh, in parentheses, the interfaith couples group that had some interesting Seder dinners. So in closing, Lynn wrote, of all the lessons he taught me, maybe the most compelling is the beautiful example he provided of a life well lived. I miss Bob's presence in my life, but I am so grateful that I knew him and had wonderful experiences that I did with him. What a gift to have a colleague, boss, mentor, and friend all in one place. Thank you, Bob. So thank you to Lynn.